We're with Brett Butler of Grace Under Fire. Here is Susan on the toll-free in Bergenfield, New Jersey. Hello. Susan in Bergenfield, hi. Susan in Bergenfield going three times. Susan in Bergenfield, sold. You know, I asked about at restaurants and stuff, what about old school chums? Do you get letters from your, uh, from your uh, what, what do they call them, uh, colleagues, uh, fellow students, uh, friends. Right. Yeah, that would be yeah. the word I'm looking oh, for. Oh, yeah, them. Friends. Yeah. Yeah, friends. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> well, I'm friends with um, well, my friend um, Robin. Uh, we've been friends since we were 10 years old, and she, we're very, very different. She's, you know, um, um, Baptist and Republican and and uh, and, and intellectual and uh, very she lives out in Texas and we're just so different we've managed to, to keep together but then I'll receive letters from old really nice ones I, I got a letter from a uh, a woman now and I remember her. we weren't like best friends in school her name was Polly and I got this letter saying uh, you know dear Brett and I was uh, at work the other day at my job I was wiping somebody's butt and I looked up on TV and there Excuse you were me? that was her phrase I'm, I'm quoting the letter yeah. wiping someone's butt I look up and you're on TV if I could have looked into a crystal ball 20 years ago I would have wept not for your success but for the fact that I wipe butts for a living yeah and she said <laughs> what then a charming I, letter I went home I loved it I yeah. need this yeah, and she I, said, I, I, hear more. I went home and I got my annual out of the attic for my you know my claim to fame and I looked up your picture and you'd written something and you would colored your picture out which was what I used to do. I used to color it out. No and, kidding. Uh, Why? Mm, uh, just don't like the way I look. And uh, and. Uh, well, I hope that's changed. Um, from time to time, right. we'll we'll tell. It depends on what the surgeons do next year, Tom. And uh, and uh, and then she said I colored it out. She said, "So you owe me, you blank head." And she wrote this obscenity, which I can't say on your show. Right. And and I, I wrote her a letter saying, I need someone to call me that. That's like really important yeah. in my life, you know, because my sisters aren't with me all the time, every woman. And uh, so she, she sent me back a letter saying, just much obliged, blank head on the thing. So I, I think we'll correspond in that way. That's vein. nice, though, you know, when you get a letter from somebody that recognizes, gee, you know, you, you, you made us all proud by being Brett and being successful and, and you know, representing our region of the country, the South, with some class and some dignity and some spunk. I, mean, I would think you'd be pleased by that. Mm, perhaps. It's, it's, uh, there's, there's a version of it, which I, I like being, having a fictitious character, but there's a price to pay for being a teller of secrets. It's a thing that Southerners don't do, especially you know, white Protestant Southerners. I was um, talking to um, someone today, um, Robert Harling, said that he'd go home and his, his family, his, the people he knows are kind of you know, quiet about things, but every now and then they just let this diamond rip and you want to go, that's my heritage. Like once when I was a kid, we went into my grandmother, my father's family's from Tuskegee, Alabama, we went in the house and my grandmother was, you know, giving us the, the thing with the ladies auxiliary and a paper on General Pershing and we were just you know, bored beyond belief and, you know, I think I was stoned at the time and she said, and this is the parlor where I gave birth to your father. And I thought, well, you know, home births were quite common. She said, the, the, the labor was so difficult, the doctor had to give me an ether enema. She said that. And I thought, I forgive my father anything at this point. As this woman had just let that thing fly and everyone in the room tipped their tea over. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, we certainly are singular in direction here tonight, aren't we? Huh? We're, we're certainly focused. Here is Colleen in Wilton, North Dakota. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, I guess I wanted to ask uh, Miss Butler, I'm a very emotional person myself, and in order to purge my feelings, I have to feel them. And then, in retrospect, I find some humor in that. Is that the same with you? Yeah, that's perfectly said, as far as I'm concerned. It sure is. Um, I like, as I get older, I have a, a lucidity and an objectivity that takes over pretty soon after like I'm well aware when I'm going through the maelstrom of a feeling that I'll get on the other side of it and, and sometimes when I'm acting because um, I'm pretty happy in my well, life wait, if, wait, wait, wait. when I'm going through the maelstrom of a feeling and I get on the other side of it I need mm -hmm. I, 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 I need instantaneous translation you're a man Tom oh okay um, sorry <laughs> big silly man <laughs> Colleen knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Quit it or I'll start crying right here. Um, no, it's, uh, it's nice. Like once I had to do a scene that was pretty emotional, and I'm pretty new at acting, so I'm having fun with it, but I had to do a scene that was emotional. And when it was over, I still felt upset, and I was really angry with myself. It felt like a cauldron that I couldn't quite put the lid back down on. So, you know, a lot of it's just, you know, pretending and, and remembering and, and trying not to, to do that. I, I don't decry being emotional. It's always spoken of in kind of a, a castigating way, like, well, you know, she's really emotional. Right. And um, 
I think you need some of that, too. I passion. Think, you yeah. need passion in life. Sparks. Got to see the sparks fly. Colleen, I'm glad you called. Thank, did, did, thank you so much. Did, did you watch last night, Colleen? Uh, no, I'm sorry I missed that. I just became unemployed, so I was crying in my soup. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that, and I wish you well. Good luck to you, young lady. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye now. Back with Brett Butler and a live report from uh, the White House. Can you believe somebody uh, now climbing over the fence at the White House uh, at 11 o'clock at night? Do you, you want to believe this now? It probably happened, didn't it? Well, it did happen, but I say, wouldn't you think that people wouldn't do that sort of thing? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, after everything that's been going on lately, there's some, uh, there's some uh, unhappy souls and groups of souls that are uh, just going to wreak some havoc here. These people are not sad. They're lunatics. Mm -hmm. We'll back with Brett Butler and a report from CBS News on what happened at the White House earlier this evening, Eastern Time, after this timeout.